Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeer Studio and today I'm sharing with you an altered house box shrine type of a thing that I started yesterday on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream and did not finish and so I finished it this morning. Uh, today's Friday and I got up this morning and finished it and I'm now doing the video. So this is a, a wooden finding that I got on Amazon and I bought one for myself and for Peg and then we both were planning on finishing them on the live stream and showing our different styles using the same item. However, I really underestimated how much time it was going to take to do what I wanted to do with this. The first thing I started was a light sanding and some gesso and I did that before the show. But then my plan is to cover the box with paper because I'm a collage artist. That's what I like to do. I like to glue paper to stuff. And so I was trying to decide if I wanted to put some of my my findings on first and gesso them and make them into texture type things or if I wanted to put them on second and decided with uh, the audience's help <laughs> that I should put them on after I covered the box. So I needed to gesso everything and that took a long time which ate up time. Had, had I been thinking I would have had the gessoing done but um, you know sometimes we start our show and we don't really know what we're going to do and I was kind of collecting stuff and I knew I had an idea that I wanted to use this photo of my grandmother which is one of the only existing photos from when my mom was a baby because there was a house fire and I thought it would be really cool to make this kind of a tribute to my grandma who has passed away and she was just one of my favorite people and I wanted I wanted to kind of take things about her life and make and include them in my project. So I photocop well I didn't photocopy, I actually scanned and printed this photo that I had. I obviously am not going to use the original photo. It's, you know, that <laughs> you wouldn't do that. So then I had sealed it with some liquid mac medium and I I put it on a harder piece of like a tag board packaging material and cut it out. Um, and then I collected a lot of different things. I collected some angel wings because she's passed away. I collected um, a little canning jar, some flowers, some different, just different things that I thought uh, would be appropriate while still being somewhat unsure what my finished project would look like. I mean, that, that's how it goes. You just, you're creating and you don't necessarily have a completed idea in your head. So then I started to cover all my my pieces with paper and I realized that I was going to have to cut panels for each side on the inside of the box and that is what was going to take so long. Um, for this one up up at the top it's going to be a triangle. The way that I figured that out was to measure uh, across horizontally and then to the peak vertically, <laughs> vertically, vertically uh, double that um, up and down vertical number which happened to be two inches so then I cut a square that was two inches by um, I mean four inches by three and three quarters and then folded it in half found the center and then cut the two sides to the center and that's how I created the triangle on the inside you could probably also just like make a template by pressing down paper and maybe rubbing a pencil over it um, to get the size but I guess maybe math is more um, more precise. I don't know. Anyway, uh, some of this paper that I'm using is, it's like printed with maps, but you can't, the maps are so tiny you can't really tell what they are, but you can tell that they're a map in the background and then there's a lot of interesting colors. And I, I like these colors. I thought they were good colors to use for this particular project. So I'm cutting and trimming and then gluing all these panels to the inside of, of insides of the box using Liquitex matte gel medium. And before I put each piece in, I'm sponging around the edges because this paper had kind of a grungy edge around it. And when I cut it, I cut like I would it would have three sides that had the spongy grungy looking edge and then one side that didn't. So I sponged each of them with uh, archival ink which is a permanent ink that doesn't run with water and I use the color potting soil 
and a little artist sponge to sponge everything. So then I got all the insides done and I was thinking about doing the insides of the triangle and then I realized that I needed to move on <laughs> and maybe do some of it later. At this point I realized I had, I, there was like, I don't know, 20 minutes left in the program. And I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna get this done. Um, the way, the way my panels worked out, it was a good thing I did have that sponging because trying to work live and not really focusing, I did end up with a few little cracks of white showing uh, through in the corners. And so I just used some brown acrylic paint and a brush and just kind of dry brushed it uh, over those corners and then you couldn't see the white anymore. So for the the front edges of the box, I wanted to use a metallic color and I decided to use copper because that's my favorite. So I'm using PBO metallic uh, copper paint to paint the just the front edges and then a lot of my other pieces will end up being copper. For the sides, bottom and back of the box, I used a piece of gel printed paper that I'd done using the um, the baby powder technique that I taught you guys a few weeks ago and that I thought was a really pretty color and then um, for the top I covered it with some brown gel printed paper and then also some die cut harlequin pattern that's a thinlets die from Sizzix and I thought it would be interesting to have a little bit of pattern on the roof so then now I'm moving on to some of the pieces I was going to put on the inside. I have all these covered with gesso. Some of them are wood, some of them are chipboard cutout pieces. And then my feather is porcelain. And it was something that someone sent me in a happy mailbox. And I thought a feather was a good choice because, you know, angel wings plus feathers were all over the place. My grandma had chickens. Um, she lived in the country, so there was, you know, feathers everywhere. So I thought that that was a, a good one. Um, I decided to make a beginning. A be blah, blah, why can't I speak this morning? I began to make this this kind of a mandala or stained glass window piece dark because I thought it would sh it would show up best in the background if it was dark, but it just looked ugly. It just looked ugly. So then I started painting it with some of the copper paint and then I got the idea to kind of make it like a metallic patina, like if it was a, a old grungy copper piece that had a bit of, of the green and blue um, metallic paint on it, which matched very well with the colors in the box because there is some of that green on the outside and the inside both. There's some of that teal color around and on the different papers. So I, I really liked how that turned out. And that was pretty much the end of the live stream show at that point. That was as far as I got. So then this morning I cut some papers for the paneling on the inside of the triangular shaped box at the top. This is another piece of scrapbook paper that has nice words like sharing and kindness and memory and things like that. Um, the definitions of the words all over it. And it was kind of that same vintage color as the old music paper that I put in the back of that box. So I went ahead and glued in, well, collaged in all those panels. Um, it took some trimming, you know, they're, they're trimming. But uh, on the outside of the box, it was much easier because you can glue the paper on and then if there's any little excess edges, you can sand them off with the sanding block makes it so much easier um, than doing these inside ones. But <clears throat> I can sand the fronts of them if there's a little bit of overlap there, which I, you'll see me doing at some point. There's just a tiny bit of overlap on one piece, and so I sanded with a sanding block just to get that off. So then I had this uh, filigree die cut piece that I put kind of in the top um, peak of the roof on the inside. it's I had painted it copper and it looks kind of cool inside there. Just, just for decoration. Here is a little wooden canning jar. My, my grandma, you know, she had all of her own produce and they would can everything. It, 
it was a different type of a life than I have, and so I'm envious of it. I, I can't grow anything here in Arizona except for desert plants. We don't eat desert plants mostly except for maybe the prickly pear fruit or the fruit of the saguaro, but that's about it. Everything else, well, you can make mesquite flour out of the mesquite pods, but in general, I don't grow tomatoes and corn and potatoes and you know, beans. And so when I visit my relatives up in Idaho, that's all so exciting to me to get that fresh, fresh food right out of the garden. But of course, when you have an abundance of food in the garden, you do need to can. So I thought the canning jar was appropriate and it was something I had in my stash. It's a little piece of a wood. So I repainted it because it had some words on the front, which I can't recall what they said, but I didn't want the words I just wanted it to look like a canning jar, so I painted it with gesso, and then I used some light blue paint, and then some white, and some silver at the top, and then I just put a few little peaches in it. They're supposed to be peaches. I don't know if you could really tell if they're peaches or not, but it's supposed to be peaches, so that's going to go in my little memory shrine. Um, I also have the word, some letters here, and they spell Grace, and that's my grandma's name, Grandma Grace, but it also has another meaning, you know, when, when you're thinking about a memory shrine, it's, uh, it, it has another meaning. So, <laughs> I thought it was appropriate to put the word, and, uh, because it's her name, and also because of the other meaning, so these are chipboard pieces, it's actually grunge board from Ranger, which is a really weird it's not as, it's not as rigid as chipboard, but it's also kind of smelly. I don't like the smell of it. It smells musty, but that's what I had. So I painted it with gesso and then now I'm painting it with that dark brown paint. I, I didn't use any black on this at all. Um, just the, the darkest color I used was that dark brown, which is, I don't know, burnt sienna, maybe. I don't know, I have to look. <laughs> But of course, I'll link everything that I used in the description box below so you can find it if I can't remember when I'm talking, which I usually can't. So then my porcelain uh, feather, I painted that with, starting with the, the yellow-green PBO iridescent acrylic paint. And then I went in on the feathery bits with the green-blue, blue-green one. And then for the uh, the quill part of the feather, or the stem of the feather, I used copper. And it does have a little hole in it because it had a little piece of jute twine. I think it was some type of an ornament um, for hanging. And I took off the twine, but I didn't want the little hole to show. So I used a paper flower to cover it up. And the flower that I picked ha also has meaning. So... Um, it was like a little daisy. You'll see it in a minute. Oh, I, I did like put some dry brushing copper over my letters also. They were just so stark. So I thought it'd be nice to have a little bit of shimmer and shine. Of course, there's pictures at the end of the video so you can see um, some close-ups of what it looks like. But even even with the video on the pictures, it still looks better than, than anything I can show you. That iridescent paint just is so shimmery. It's so, so shimmery. It's great paint, that PBO uh, Dyna Iridescent Acrylic. And it just never shows up well. You just, you just can't pick, pick, take a picture or a video of it. But anyway, here I am gluing the letters in the word grace at the t uh, over the top of this um, mandala wooden piece. I left space up there for it. But I, do, I did use uh, tacky glue because it gives you a little bit of time to move it if you didn't place it precisely where you wanted it. And then I'm using a damp paper towel to kind of clean up if any. If I do move the letter, the tacky glue shows a little bit and I try to clean that up because it will be shiny. Even though it dries clear, it will be shiny and I don't want that, that shininess in there. I want everything to be fairly matte except for the iridescent paint. So shimmery but not shiny. See where I'm going there? <laughs> it's a theme with me. I don't like shiny but I love shimmery and glimmery, glittery. So I glued that daisy flower over the hole 
in my feather and then I'm gluing my feather in that triangular shaped top. The reason I picked the paper Daisy is because in the picture the baby is my mom and her name is Daisy. So that makes sense too. If you if you know if you know that it makes sense. So then I used a uh, fine tip Fabric Castell pit pin, an artist illustration pin, to kind of add a little bit of illustration to my jar. Um, I I put the cre the creases of the canning lid um, back in and drew some other little illustration lines. Then I wanted this to stand out from the background. Like if I put it back against that mandala piece, it was too far back in there. There's a whole two inches of space that seemed to, I thought needed to be filled. So I cut a couple pieces of corrugated cardboard um, from a box, just tiny little pieces, and I stacked them up to make it too thick of the pieces. And then I used um, some E6000 glue and some tacky glue to glue all that together, and that helps that canning jar to stand forward more from the background. And you'll never see that in there. You'd, I mean, I guess maybe you could if you really looked, but it's hidden back behind. Then I had this little star sticker. Um, it look, looks like aged pewter, but I put some copper on there and turned it into copper. But it still looks aged. You can still see the dark bits from behind. I had a piece of um, tag board, or not tag board, yeah, tag board that was cut out that looks kind of like a plate um, that you would stick on something with nails, you know. So I got a Tim Holtz sticker and put it on there after I painted it copper. And then I used some black mini brads in the holes. I'm not actually going to try to hammer it into the wood or anything. I'm just going to glue it on there. But it gives the idea that there are some nails or something holding that plate on. But I just used the E6000 glue and glued it on on that little cross piece under the triangular shaped piece. And the words I picked, um, live simply, give generously. That's that's my grandma. Intuity. That's exactly everything about her. <laughs> so then I put the the star on. I, the reason that I put the star on, well, I just liked it for one thing, but the other reason is that it gives balance because I know I'm going to put my grandma's image down in the lower right hand side of the box in the front and it would be it would be not balanced because that's such a big image and the wings are going to stick out a little bit. It wouldn't, um, it, would, it would throw the composition off. So I need more things on the left hand side and I needed something that would kind of hang off on the left hand side also because the wing is going to hang off on the right hand side. So having the star up there gives the composition balance and also having the cluster of things, the canning jar, and then now I'm putting some flowers in on the right hand side, I mean the left hand side also gives balance and also depth because it has many layers of depth from the mandala piece all the way to the jar all the way to the flowers which are in the front. So that's just kind of thinking about composition and the way things should balance so that it's pleasing to the eye. Then I glued the piece on with my grandma and my mom and I just glued it in a couple places with E6000 at the bottom making sure that it lined up very close to the bottom and then I glued the wing down on the side. And then I had this heart and I wanted, I just wanted to put heart on there. It's, it's such a, an image that I love so much. I just really love the heart shape. It's like, you know, you have shapes that you like, you like circles, you like spirals, you like diamonds, whatever. I like hearts. And so I want, and it, it represents love. So I wanted to put that there. So I put that on the side of the box and I painted it copper and then sponged around the edges with brown a little bit. Then I needed something on the other side and I had this little hand piece that was a piece of wood that I picked out from the collection and decided that that would be a good choice. Uh, give generously, giving, 
sharing um, you know hand seems to represent that and I, I added uh, some little centers to my paper flowers the flower colors I picked were the right colors to go with the, the whole composition and there's my little hand to put in I hope you've enjoyed this project if you want to see the uh, full-length version of the beginning of it anyway and to finish it you can go over to Art Joy of Sharing live stream. We live stream every Thursdays, and uh, that's at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So you can come and join us, talk in the chat. Um, it's kind of fun, and we'll be doing that again next Thursday, so you might want to come over. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below so you know I can talk to you and we can ha build a community here on YouTube. And, of course, if you think somebody would like this project, share it. Um, you can pin it on your Pinterest. You can put it on Facebook, whatever you want. And um, subscribe if you haven't already. The channel's still growing, so I know people are still subscribing. So I hope you've enjoyed this project. Here's a little video close up, and then there are some pictures at the end. And that is it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.